As part of the interview process, you will have to complete a drug assessment paper. Now, these vary from hospital to hospital and care home to care home, but generally they are split into mathematic questions where you have to change, say, millilitres into litres, or you have to work out how many minutes a drug might take to deliver, or you have to decide how many tablets you might give of a certain drug. Now, the maths part of the paper doesn't really give people many problems. So if you need to use complex formulas, they will usually be provided as part of the paper. Generally, though, they are just basic maths. So if you read the question carefully, you should be able to work out the answer. The majority of our NHS hospitals and care homes allow you to use a calculator. If you're not allowed to use a calculator, then your recruitment consultant will tell you that you're not allowed to use one. The, the paper, the length of the paper can vary depending on trust or hospital or care home. For example, as part of the mathematics questions, they might ask you how long a litre or a thousand millilitres of intravenous fluid would take to deliver at 125 mils per hour. Or they might ask you to convert 480 millilitres into litres. Or they might ask you to convert 1.2 grams into milligrams. If they ask you to convert a drug from, say, milligrams to grams or from litres to millilitres, the formula will normally be on the front of the drug paper. The other thing to watch out for with drug calculations is that sometimes they use abbreviations. For example, they might use OD, BD, TDS or QDS. And in England, that's the way we use uh, to describe the frequency of the way that the drug should be delivered. So, for example, OD is once a day, BD is twice a day, TDS is three times a day and QDS is four times a day. Now, in our educational file, there's a very good breakdown of abbreviations, in particular regarding drugs. If at the interview you are not sure what an abbreviation means, then you can ask your recruitment consultant or one of the representatives from the hospital to explain it. We know that the way you talk about drugs in different countries can be different to the way we talk about drugs in the UK. The other thing about drug calculation papers are sometimes they have a few questions about problem solving. For example, they might ask you a question about delivery of a controlled drug or about what you would do if you make a medication error or about how what you would do about taking a verbal order for a prescription over the phone. Now, in the drug calculation paper example that we've got in our educational file, you can find some of these types of questions. Generally, for a controlled drug, you always need two nurses to check, deliver and sign for the drug. And we know that that's different from processes, for example, in Spain or in Italy or in Greece. So if you get asked a question about controlled drugs, you always need two trained nurses to check and to sign for the drug. For an example about prescriptions, about taking verbal orders for drugs over the phone, in the UK you should not give a drug unless it is prescribed. If you're having trouble interpreting any abbreviations within the drug paper, then you are within your right to ask what that abbreviation means. And it's always worth doing so and not trying to to guess what the abbreviation is. In the educational file, there is abbreviations about different medical conditions, different terms that we use, and also about drugs. Even if you don't need this for your drug calculation paper, it's good for you to have when you first start working because to have in your pocket when you're working so you can interpret medical notes. Because even though we say that you shouldn't use abbreviations in documentation, it does occur. And it's a good, useful resource for you for when you start work. The next video will focus on how you can answer a clinical scenario type question. Mm